two fellas in a sheep. Uh, just two of you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Are we happy this morning? Amen. God bless you. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Sure. Amen. I hope my voice will be able to carry me uh, through, but I won't take you long because we need to go to Free State. I'm sure you are happy for that. Huh? <laughs> just be 30 minutes, then we go to Free State. I see Sister Karina, she's smiling there. <laughs> Amen. I'm happy to see you this morning. Uh, do you know that God loves you? Amen. Jesus loves you. Amen. You may think that your boss loves you. If you make a mistake, he's going to fire you. Amen. But Jesus loves you. Ah, Jesus gave you a promise that I'm going to prepare a place and I shall come back to take you. The boss cannot say that. Ah, but Jesus can say that. He wants to give you eternal life. He died for your sins. God gave his own begotten son that thing which was dearest to him, he let it go for you. Yeah. He took your sins to the cross so that you can get eternal life. He loves you. Yeah. He gives you the Holy Ghost. He gives you the new birth to make sure you don't miss it. Yeah. Who didn't you love such a God? He sends ministers. He's raised a pastor here to take care of your issues. Just showing his love for you. He let us build this nice building huh? so that you can be fed spiritually. God loves you. Huh? He has given you eyes to do what? To read his way, not to see. Because seeing, you see a lot of things. Ah. Huh? You see a lot of things. But God gave you eyes to read the Bible. He gave you ears to do what? Listen to his word. You can listen to a lot of things. And there are plenty. In the taxi. Everywhere. But God gave you ears so that you can listen to his word. Huh? He gave you hands to open the pages of the Bible. I'm sure last night you opened, huh? How many opened? <laughs> Pete, his hand shot up. <laughs> to open the pages of the Bible. Not to open some strange things, but the Bible. Amen. Are we together? Amen. He gave you a tongue to talk to him. Eh? To tell him your convictions. To tell him your problems. The things that are dearest to you, God gave you a tongue so that you can sing. How many were singing this morning? Amen. I saw them that were not singing. Yeah. I said, maybe God can come and just remove that tongue. <laughs> yeah. Are we together? Amen. So I want to speak about the believer's tongue this morning as we just raise up to our feet. Now, we just want to read quite a number of scriptures. I hope you bear with me. The first one is Pro Proverbs 15. You love him this morning? Amen. Amen. Proverbs 15, verse 1. If you are there, we just read. The Bible says, A soft answer. Turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Those are strong words. Huh? It's not me. Huh? This is the Bible. If you go to James 1, verse, we start with verse 26. James 1, verse 26. If you are there, we shall read. The Bible says, If any man, that man refers to everyone, huh? 
So don't say it's just brothers, sisters included there. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceive, deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Now the Bible did not say the religion is in vain. It says the religion is what? Vain. And that word means of no value. Useless, unsuccessful. The Bible says this man's religion is vain. That's very strong, huh? Again, that's not me. That's the Bible. Okay, while we're still standing, let's read James 3. Oh, yes, may the Lord help us this morning. It says James 3, verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. You see, perfection comes from the use of the tongue. It says, uh, and able also to bridle the whole body. You can bridle the whole body by knowing the mastery of using the tongue. He says, uh, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us and we turn about the whole body of the horse. For behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithsoever the governor listed the driver. Says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue amongst our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of. Verse 7, for every kind of beast and of, of bird and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed, and he hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. This is a Bible. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. It's just standing there. You are full of deadly poison. Imagine the Bible saying such things. Therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and there we curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Oh, yes. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, this is your word. Hard statements. Amen. Rough words, oh God. Amen. But you accept them this morning. Amen. It's written for us. Amen. It's written for perfection. Amen. May we humble ourselves, Heavenly Father, to this and say, yes, Lord, we believe. We surrender the reading of the word into your hands. May you come and give us interpretation. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you. Now, you may say, isn't there something else to talk about? Why talk about the tongue? Now, I'm not speaking about talkativeness. No. Don't get me wrong. I'm not speaking about extroversion, where someone is a bubbling bee, always talking and all this. That's extroversion. That's for the psychologist. I'm not talking about introversion, where someone is just quiet, doesn't say a word the whole day. No, I'm talking about that time. The believers... We are clear there. 
It's not a psychology lecture or an extroversion. No, I'm talking about the believer's tongue. Are we together? Why talk about the tongue? We all have one. So we are all affected. We are in the same boat. Because everyone has got a tongue. Every animal has got a tongue. Yeah. The difference is the length, the size, the height, the thickness of that tongue. Even a frog has got a tongue, a chameleon. Yeah. But it extends. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? The chameleon it extends. It has got a tongue. Even a crocodile has got a tongue. But it's glued to the jaws. It doesn't move. That's why it just swallows everything. It doesn't chew. But it has got a tongue. A snake has got a tongue. But it's forked. Yeah. Yeah. If you meet a snake, brother prince, and it's doing this, what do you do? You say, oh, my friend. Because, you know, ah, I'm going to die here. Amen. It's a tongue. Ah. Yes. So they say an average person speaks about 11 million words in a year. Average. They are outliers. Huh? There are some that speak 50 million, some 1 million. But on average, it's 11. You imagine the amount of words that we speak in a year. And if God would give you a graph and say, look, you spoke 11 million words this year, but 10 million, you were talking about yourself. Your achievements. You were gossiping. Eh? You were talking about all things apart from God. 500,000, that's why you were saying amen in church. <laughs> would you like such a summary? Or you want God to say you spoke 50 million, but 40 million, you were in church. You spoke about me. You testified. You prayed. 40 million. Wouldn't you like such a testimony? Amen. Coming from God himself. The believers. Dang. Are we together, friends? Everyone is affected. That's the reason why we should speak about the believers. Dang. The second reason, the Lord Jesus himself. If we go to Matthew 12. The Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The man that we love. The man that we worship in Matthew 12 spoke something very strong. He says, verse 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. The man who is going to judge you is giving you a basis for judgment. Saying every idle word, careless. Eh? You are going to meet it on the day of judgment. And say, hey, Wena, you spoke 500 billion words in your 60 years. And 400 billion were idle words, given account. Starting with the one you said when you were two years old. Give an account. Imagine. This is the Lord Jesus saying, on the day of judgment, every careless word you are going to answer. For by the words thou shalt be justified. By thy words thou shalt be condemned. Hey, we give no interpretation. This is the Lord Jesus giving us a basis. Where are the Okay, let's go to Matthew 5, verse 21. I have to rush here. It says, you have heard that it was said by them of all time. Thou shalt not kill. Whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. First word says, but. The only person who is allowed to quote scripture and say, but, was the Lord Jesus. Not you. Yeah. Who are you? Who is me? Say, Matthew 4 says, this but. Who are you? It's Jesus saying, but <laughs> I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever 
shall say to his brother, Raka, it means empty head. His brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. That's for judgment. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Which means you are not even a Christian to say fool. Eh? Even if it's your child. You have prepared a pot of wool with stew. And it comes. Maybe it's Adonai. Maybe it's Jediah. Or it's Nathan. He puts sugar in there. And you say, you fool. It doesn't matter. The Bible says you are in danger of what? Because of your tongue. We have got no right to call our children fools. You are in danger of hellfire. Can we say amen? amen. Is it getting hard? It's not me. It's the Bible. Huh? We all want to go to heaven. Huh? I also want to go there, friends. This was written for you. James 3 was written for you. Yeah. It says we must control the what? Not speaking a thousand words a day or ten thousand. No, 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 no. That's not the point. But it's what is it that you say? That's the fountain. What is it that you say? That's the question we are trying to address. That's the Lord Jesus speaking about the tongue. We come to gems in the Bible. You know, gems, Pastor James. The brother who wrote this, this the verses that we read. Yeah. Remember Galatians 2, verse 9. If we can hear it, brother, then. Galatians 2, verse 9. Paul says James was a pillar of the church. He wasn't a fly by night. When James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, yeah, he was a pillar. Acts 15. Verse 18, there was a council in Jerusalem. You know, the church in Jerusalem was very big. It was 123 saints in the upper room. Peter preached one sermon. 3,000 were baptized. So it was a big church, difficult to gather. So they had a team of elders, and James was the leader. <laughs> Are we together? He was the pastor there in the absence of Peter. And Paul acknowledges, says he was a pillar in that church. Hey. Galatians, Peter was eating with the Galatians. But when those of James came, Peter said, yeah, 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 better withdraw because this is brother James. This is brother James. We must obey what James has written. That's the man. Huh? He was the pastor there. And he's the one who is saying it here. Saying the tongue is a problem. You cannot tame it. So it's a problem. I'm sure he had problems in the church at Jerusalem. The church that the Lord Jesus started, it had this problem of the tongue. Are we together? Amen. So are we spared? 10% says no. <laughs> you are not spared. <laughs> Are we together, friend? Okay, the fourth reason, Paul says it. Romans 3, verse 18. He says, their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison ups is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. This is in the church of the Romans. The Apostle Paul is addressing a letter with such words in the church of the living God. Can you imagine, friends? Hey, this man, we're not, we're not afraid to deal with issues. Huh? To cleanse the church. To take a hammer and really hit hard. And then after that, you use a sandpaper. Say, brother, you are now coming right. <laughs> are we together, friends? Amen. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Okay, my first quotation. Brother Branham also says it. In the message, uh, Hebrews chapter 7, 
the brothers will just put it up there. We are speaking about the believer's tongue. Remember what we say. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to see you in heaven. He says, and you, people with these soul blade tempers, so blade. That's always spouting. That's discharging. Huh? Off in the mouth at somebody. Can't put up. And things like that. He says, be careful. <laughs> be careful. Huh? You are guilty if you speak a word against your brother. That's not right. Go around and tear te- Tear down it. You don't have to stick a knife in a man's back to kill him. You can break his character and kill him, kill his influence. Just to kill his influence. You are a murderer. And the Bible says what? All murderers will never inherit the kingdom of God. We are together. Now don't get frightened. He says, speak against your pastor here. Sure. That's even worse so far. He says, uh, say something bad about him. You just might as well shoot him. Told something that wasn't right about him. Well, it will kill his influence with the people and things like that. We can remove the word pastor and put any brother, any sister here. You kill his or her influence. You are a... You are a what? How many murderers do we have? <laughs> but you come to church for cleansing. Huh? Are we together? Even though you are a murderer today, eh, the one who is convicting you is also the judge. Yeah? The one who is laying charge against you, the prosecutor. After prosecuting you, he becomes a defendant. Then he becomes a judge and says he's not guilty. Innocent. He's not a murderer. I don't see blood in his hands. That's the beauty of worshiping Christ. Yeah? The mouth, friends. Problem number one, if we go back to the scripture that we read, it says your religion is, in, is vain if you do not bridle your tongue. Your religion is in vain. I hope I'll be able to use this thing. Your religion will be in vain. Just move it for me, brothers. I think I was born ABC. Just move to the next slide. So it says uh, the bridle, it's a piece of equipment that is used to direct a horse. You know this, huh? I don't seem to succeed in moving it to the next page. It says uh, a bridle is a piece of equipment used to direct a horse. We all know that. Uh. We've got horses next door there. When you want to ride it, you put things up. Uh, and then you hold the reins. If you want to turn right, what do you do? You pull this one. Uh. And those things have got some sharp prongs inside. So if the guy refuses, you pull harder and it goes in. Then at some point, it's got to give in and turn. Those ones are the rain. I've got the, this, is, this whole thing is the bridle. And in here, I've got some bits. It's a sharp prong that goes in. So if you want that guy to turn right, you pull it harder. Eh? And the apostle James is typing that thing to your tongue, to my tongue. So if the bishop 
does not bridle his tongue. His religion is vain. Can you get closer home? <laughs> if the song leader does not bridle his tongue, his religion is what? If the deacon's wife does not bridle his tongue, I've said deacon's wife, because I'm also a deacon. You may say I'm referring to those two brothers. Huh? Does not bridle her tongue. Her religion is what? So it affects everyone. The layman, the Sunday school teacher, the Sunday school superintendent is affected here. Your religion is worthless <laughs> if you don't bridle your tongue. We are together there. Yes. Problem number two, these careless words. If we use ugly, dirty, spiteful, gossiping, grumbling words, at the end, they'll condemn us. The words that we speak are, yeah, because Jesus said those idle words will meet up with you on the day of judgment. Imagine after having spoken 11 billion words in this all grumbling, it's all gossip, it's all rough riding, rabble rousing. Yeah. And they, are, they imagine, friend, how overwhelmed you are going to be on the day of judgment. Yeah. Or on the other hand, we can use gracious words. Loving, edifying, encouraging, profitable ways. And on the day of judgment, they meet up with you. Brother Nigel, wouldn't you like such a, an arrangement where you stand before God and your words are positive? Yeah? There's a weapon more powerful than an atomic bomb. It's your tongue. If you didn't know. It's being used since the existence of creation. It can start a war. Yeah. End friendships. Yeah. Split homes. Yeah. Start national revolutions. Sure. The tongue. Yeah. It can wreck your reputation. The tongue. For someone to look at you and say, hey, this sister will say such a word. Where did it come from? <laughs> eh? Are we together? For a girl to be married, it's a tongue. Imagine if my wife had said, ah, Brother Bedno, I know you, but hey, your face is like a flat tractor tire. I don't want you. <laughs> it would be a different story. Yeah. But the word says, yes, and I'm here today. A girl to be married, it's the tongue, which says what? Yes. yes. And then brother, you can smile up to here. <laughs> because is that? Church fights, is that? Tongue. Family fights, is that? Tongue. Misunderstanding, is that? Tongue. Hey, this is Pastor James addressing the church. It's not me. Are we together? Yes. Let's read something. In Philippians 4, if you can have it, brother, there. Philippians 4. This is Paul addressing the church in Philippi concerning two sisters, Scientic and Eudias. I hope the pronunciation is right. Huh? Hey. Even Paul himself he had to deal with the issues of the tongue. I won't be long, huh? Like I said. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 2. Paul says, I beseech you, Dias, and I beseech Scientic, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Hey, the apostle coming down to join in in a field between two sisters in church. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, friends? Yeah. Let's go to verse 2. The, the next verse. It says, I entreat thee also, true York fella, help those women 
which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Paul is concerned because their names, they are in the book of life. You sitting here, your names are written somewhere in a small corner. Your names are written. Otherwise, you would not be here this morning. But why do we have Sister Scientic and Sister Udias pulling tag of war because of that tongue? Hey, if you are pulling, sister, recant. Don't drive your car home there when you know I, 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 don't, I, I can't speak with sister so and so. Even I'm, if I meet her in front of King, I'll... please. Can I urge you, don't drive outside there without going to that sister and say, Sister, God bless you. You promise me? Amen. 10% of the church. That's up to you. <laughs> That's up to you. You are going to meet those words. When? Day of judgment. You better clear it now. Are we together? Yes. Now I think you know me for Matthew 15 now. It's one of the chapters that I like most. <laughs> we are speaking about the believers. Hey, I like Matthew 15. In Matthew 12, verse 17 of Matthew 15 says, Do not yet ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile them men. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murderers, adulteries, fornication, thefts, and all those things. Eh? Jump to Matthew 12. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and this fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Jesus says, all generation of vipers, Matthew 12, verse 34, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Hey, you, being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. Jesus is speaking of three things. Our words expose three things. We either have a heart of a viper. That's verse 34. Or the heart of an evil man. That's verse 35. Or the heart of a good man. Verse 35. The tongue exposes the nature. If you've got a critical heart, you've got a critical tongue. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Sure, I can see faces, they are not happy. It says, now you are trending on our toes. <laughs> I'm not trending on your toes, sister. I never left my home and come here to trend on your toe. I'm supposed to be in free state to tread on the toes of the devil, not you. <laughs> we are just preaching the gospel. Are we together? Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen. Sure. A self righteous heart produces a judgmental tongue. Amen. Where you judge things, you judge the dress. Say that ah, it's not up to standard. Because yours, you think yours is up to standard. Sure. You judge the dress code of the next sister. Say, ah, she's not yet there. Who are you? <laughs> huh? Who are you? It's because your heart is judgmental. And then your tongue becomes judgmental. Whether you speak one word, eh, eh, but that very word that you speak is judgmental. Whether I speak 50,000 words in one hour, but those ones, they're judgmental. Because the heart is what? Are we together, friends? Jesus loves you. A bitter heart.
produces an acidic tongue. Eh? A grumbling heart produces a grumbling tongue. Ungrateful heart will always produce a grumbling tongue. Eh? But a loving heart, you may say, hey, this brother is just negative. A loving heart produces a gracious tongue. A faithful heart produces a truthful tongue. A peaceful heart produces a reconciling tongue. Are we together, friends? The believer's tongue. A trusting heart who produces an encouraging. So no, trust in God, sister. Trust in God, brother. Who we'll pray for you, brother. Don't worry about this. God is great. But hey, I, I went through this. It was hard. Hey, uh, brother. Hey, uh, see what you can do, brother. This. Uh, see what you can do, sister. Don't just say, church, 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 church. Don't just say, church, church, church. Do something. Hey. It's because the heart does not trust in God. And then the tongue. <laughs> Are we together? The tongue of the Athenians, those who stay in Athens. Acts 17, verse 21. You have read that scripture before? Those that stay in Athens. Let's hear it, brother. What do they do? To hear things. Yeah. Let's hear it, brother. Acts 17, verse 21. For the, all the, all the Bible says all. Oh. I mean, to believe the Bible does not lie. Amen. The whole town. Those that stay in Athens. We can say those that stay in Frenachin. Everyone in Frenachin. And strangers as well. Those that come in to visit, they get enveloped by that spirit of doing what? Amen. Spend their time in nothing else. But either to tell or to hear some new thing. Those in Athens. Is that the country tabernacle? No. Eh? No. Where you just want to hear. When you visit, you want to hear. Now I've come to visit you, brother, just to see how are you doing. Okay, I see your grass is green now. You are not taking... Okay, I take... Okay. But yeah, this portion, yeah, his brother, you can do with some gardening here. Eh? Ah, sister, I've come to see you, sister. I've come to see you, but you are busy watching, hearing. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Ah, thank you. The next thing. Hey, did you hear? Sister, so and so. Hey. Ah, yeah, yeah. Times are hard <laughs> for the sister. Hey, hey. You are an Athenian. Hey. There's something wrong with your heart. Yes, you need Jesus. You need the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. Otherwise, those words will meet you on the judgment day. Are we together? Surely. You like me after this, sir? The tongue destroys. How are we doing on time? Sure. The tongue destroys. Eh? The tongue defiles. It defiles you. It destroys you. Your words can have everlasting damage. The words that you speak, careless words, we have some everlasting damage. Huh? They'll defile you. Hey, are we together? Huh? They can strip that radiance, that respect which people have for you. That when they see you, they say, ah, oh, brother, so and so, sister, so and so. But one word that you say, they say, hi. Hey. Hey, yeah, yeah. Which church does he go to? Say, so he goes to country tabernacle. I said, hey, is that what they teach? Who is the pastor? It's Brother Hannes Van Vick. Hannes, but I know him. He's a good man, man. Huh? What is happening? What is he teaching? You see now. Yeah. What is he teaching? There, that church. Huh? Hey, my daughter. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll never go there. Because of you. Because of my tongue. 
<laughs> Don't be afraid. Jesus is here. He can wash you. Yeah. He can clean you. This is James speaking. Pastor James. This one was a pastoral letter. It, was a, it wasn't evangelistic. Where he was blasting sin. Ah, it was pastoral. Showing them the position of their tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Paul speaking about those two sisters, Scientic and Eudias. The position of their tongue. That sister, this is your position. Yeah. You don't just throw your tongue anyway. Brother, this is your position. You don't just... Yeah. <laughs> you don't just spew words. Discharge words. Like an open sewage pipe. You don't just do that. You are a sister. Jesus died for you. You are a brother. Jesus died for you. To cleanse that tongue, man. Are we together? James 3 it says, All kinds of animals. Beds, reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed and they have been tamed by men. But no man can tame the tongue. No man, but Jesus can tame it. You believe it? Jesus can tame it. A horse is tamed so that I can decide where to go, left or right. A dog can be tamed. It doesn't bite you. You do this. Angola! You know Angola? Yeah, by yeah, brother Paul there. The other one is India. India! Come here. I'm sure there's a Japan coming. Because that dog is what? Is tamed. Huh? Because that dog is tamed. It does what you want. Are we together? Now if your mouth is tamed by the Bible, what are my expectations? If your tongue is tamed by this Bible, by the Lord Jesus, what are my expectations? Can you gossip? Eh? Can you gossip? Can you say, hey, see way, ah, these days, ah, see way. Can you do that? Ah, see way is my friend there. You can't do that, huh? Eh? You cannot visit my house. Ah, okay. It's fine. <laughs> Your tongue will speak about Christ. Amen. Because the guy riding the horse Amen. determines left or right. Amen. You drove your car this morning, huh? coming to church. Huh? You took a right, left turn there. Hey, I was going to be shocked if the car said, no, I don't want to turn left. I want to turn right. Hey, hey, I want to turn right. You are busy doing this and the car is turning right. Does it happen? No. Ah, if your tongue is tamed by the Lord Jesus, you speak about Christ. Amen. You cannot gossip. Amen. You share the gospel to someone. Amen. That becomes the basis for testifying. Amen. We don't testify because the tongue is not tamed Amen. by the Lord Jesus. Ah, if I meet Timmy and I want to say, Timmy, you know, there's someone called the Lord Jesus. Assuming Timmy was someone there. Eh, with Matekwan and stuff like that. Assuming that. And I meet, this guy is a nice guy, man. He's my boss at work, but let me just talk to him. Eh, and you want to say, Jesus, you know, you become as if uh, some, some force is closing your mouth. You can't take about Jesus. Eh? Because that tongue is not tamed by the Lord Jesus. But if it's tamed, it's easy. You are not ashamed. You just go, say, oh, Jesus loves you. You know, Jesus loves you. Jesus can help you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Ah, what do you mean, Jesus? Jesus, hey, yeah, come to church. You invite someone to church. The whole year, you don't even invite one person to come to church. Is your tongue tamed? Now we're going to evangelism. Huh? Is your tongue tamed? One year, in, out. You are just alone coming to church. But you can see the bench is empty here. You are happy. You and your family, you pack yourself in your car. Let's go to church. You come, you sleep in church. How can it be, friends? 
Is the tongue tamed? Eh? Is Jesus riding on your tongue to speak about Christ, to speak good things, to encourage someone, eh? to visit someone who is sick and say, let me offer my two-cent prayer. God bless you and go home. To encourage someone about Christ. If your tongue is what? It's tamed. Are we together? Or we beg bites. I like that tamer. Because you bite someone at the back, he doesn't see. <gasps> so I was just playing with playing with you. <laughs> the believer's tongue, friends, is it tamed? Is my tongue tamed by the Lord Jesus? Are we together, friends? The tongue is a very dangerous weapon. We must control it. Amen. Now we are there. Let's just read that quotation. It says here, yeah, sometimes we, you can just follow with me there. We have growing pains when we get to be men and women. When we are born in the kingdom of God, Christ. But the thing about that, it hurts. The thing about this, I'm sure the prophet was referring to the Bible. The thing about this, sometimes it hurts. <laughs> And then it says, this, it makes you joyful and happy. But it's growing pains. You are going out, getting bigger, getting to be bigger men now than what you used to, to be. Now you just got wider shoulders. That don't mean nothing about it. Eh? Maybe you go to the gym, it means nothing. It says, uh, but you're wider here. I'm sure I was pointing to his heart. Not across here. In here. Here is where you're supposed to spread out, get bigger in your heart on the inside. When Christ comes into the heart, then he comes into your... When Christ comes into the heart, he comes where? Now, if he's not in the mouth, is he in the heart? Amen. That's strong, huh? Amen. Don't say amen if you don't believe it. <laughs> then he comes into the mouth. Then he comes into the... You don't see strange things. Because he's in the... He comes into the mind. You don't imagine things. Because he's controlling the... Young brothers, I don't want to start on you, but if you start sleeping there, yo, I don't know what's wrong with this thing here. He says, uh, but I wanted you to, 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 read, to read together with me there. I'm reading paragraph 175. I'm not really sure. He says here, uh, um, he comes into the mouth, paragraph 175. He makes you talk different. Ah, what a promise. He comes into the mouth. You are still talking, but he makes you talk different. You don't talk like you used to do, but you are still talking. If it's 50,000 words per minute, it's still 50,000 words per minute. But you're talking different because he's in control of the tongue. Christ got into your mouth. Huh? Done, grown now from your heart. You love your love you had for him till you can bridle your tongue. He says, brother, that's a great thing. Till you can bridle your you can control it. That's what, that's the promise which is there. Yeah? You can bridle your tongue. The believer's tongue. Okay, the next one says, a woman, 
that walk, get on the telephone. A woman represents a church. So it's brothers and sisters there. Get on the telephone and tattle and start fasting way in the church. And things like that. That isn't a life worth of the gospel that you are going to represent. Any person that will break up a church starts a feud between people. Things like that is not worthy of the gospel that we preach. You are not worthy of the gospel that is being preached. Hey, yeah. Please find another church. But before you do that, repent. Huh? <laughs> are we together, friends? The believer's tongue. Okay. It says here, yeah. I'll just start, start reading from says, you may be so burdened with sin until your soul is as smart as it can be. You, you may have tried to get rid of that ill temper, that slandering tongue, that gossip on the telephone, on the smartphone, on WhatsApp, eh? on what's there. The things that we write on WhatsApp, and to all the little children in the family, they've got WhatsApp accounts. Hey, they don't even know, and quotation. But they all got WhatsApp. No, you must put WhatsApp, my, my, my son. Yeah, WhatsApp. Brother Bedno, how are you? Find it's a WhatsApp from a four-year-old. Hey, on the telephones, on the WhatsApp. That's where we gossip about one another. Until one sister sent me a message. I said, sister, don't ever send me such messages. Please. Hey, ask me her name, I'll tell you. <laughs> Says, I said, don't even send me such messages, such type of messages on my phone. I don't want. It was a WhatsApp message from a sister. 30 years in the message. Has this message failed? Has the blood of Jesus failed? Tame your tongue. The things that you type on WhatsApp, so offensive. The pictures that we put there, so offensive. And when you look at it, you get ashamed. Show a slandering tongue. A tongue, words that damage the reputation of others. Where you slander your wife in front of others. I said, ah, hey, I, I, I don't know what we eat there at home. It's just the mambo jumbo. <laughs> and four brothers, they are listening there. She says, how is it? Oh, it's chew with uh, fish inside there. You don't know. It's like medicine, cough syrup. <laughs> in plate. And the other brothers, they are laughing. What happens when I see your wife? I said, hey, yeah. Lord, you have mess. <laughs> Slandering your wife. But it's a brother singing a special here. Yeah? It's a sister outdoing the husband. So now, now you start lying, you see. When there are five brothers there, so now you start lying. And the brother will just say, <laughs> yeah? Embarrassing your husband in front of others, even if he's wrong. Yeah? The two of you said, ah, but daddy, we're not supposed to. I said, what is it? You're not supposed to. I said, oh, I'm sorry, man. I forgot. But I said, ah, you're wrong, man. Uh-uh. And, okay, stop there. The believer's tongue. Amen. Are we together, friends? Amen. It's time to stop now. Says, uh, Says, uh, says, shame on you. You who has took the blessed cup of God across this, that's communion, the altar here, and you call brothers and sisters, and they get on the telephone and guard off about one another. You are not fit to be called Christians. Gee, that's very strong, huh? Exactly the anointing of James, that you are not fit. 
exactly what Jesus said, that you are going to face judgment. And Brother Bram said, you are not fit to be a Christian. <coughs> eh? Okay. I'll jump things here for the sake of our time. I'll go to that one. The stage of a perfect man. Are we together? Amen. Are we still happy? Amen. The believer's tongue. Amen. Eh? The believer's tongue. The words that you say are they seasoned with salt. If someone can listen to what you are saying, we say, ah, that tongue is full of grace. That's a sister. That's a brother. That's encouraging. That's refreshing. Or to say, hey, my daughter, I've never heard that word. Remember, Brother Branham was on the table and he said, uh, his son Joseph said one word. That will make a drunken sailor ashamed of himself. He says, mother almost fainted because of one word. They were eating. Almost fainted, Mida. He said, oh, 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 oh. one word. Sure. Brother Brown says, hey, who have you been with? He said, no, that boy. Said, That's why. He said, no more today with that boy. Amen. But how many ways do we speak? Slendering, slang, Tosita, South Africa. Yeah, a sister with tossed out like shortcuts. Yeah, it's a it's a township language. Yeah. If you go to Everton, you fit there. The language. You can maneuver yourself. You know, like the taxi language. If you see someone like this, you mean, ah, what's that? But they know exactly I'm going to Orange Farm. They know it. If you meet someone doing this on a on a road, they'll know this is Orange Farm. Do you know it? You don't know her. But it's a taxi language, Orange Farm. Said, so, oh, the taxi stops. They don't even ask where you're going. Huh? Come in. Because it's Orange Farm. <laughs> yeah? Christians, we must use the language of the Bible. Amen. Not shortcuts and slandering. Yeah? How can you testify with someone in this short language? Yeah? Short language, you want to testify, uh, my daughter. He says, the state of a perfect man. He says, uh, paragraph 220. He says, and temperance. Oh my, we have come to temperance. Now we have faith. Uh, first, you have to have that to begin with. Then you add virtue to your faith, if it's the right kind of virtue. Then you add knowledge, you know. And then temperance doesn't mean stop drinking alcohol here either. No, 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 no. Temperance doesn't mean alcoholic cure. Not in this case. This is Bible temperance. Holy Spirit temperance. That's just one of the last of the flesh. But we're talking about Holy Spirit temperance. That means how to control your tongue. Not to be a tattler. How to control your temper. Not fly off every time anybody speaks cross to you. Brother Bram says that is Bible temperance. You don't find it in a dictionary. But in a prophetic dictionary, you are going to find that definition. How to control your tongue is one of the virtues on the state of a perfect man. And it's mandatory. Eh? It is expected. Yeah? It's not negotiable. It's compelling and compulsory that it must be there. Bible temperance. How to control your tongue. Chadrick. How to control your tongue. It must be there. The believer's tongue. Yeah. That's the purpose of preaching the gospel. We know it's difficult. Maybe your, Michael, your, your father was a, the chief, the one who is always talking offensive, and you inherited. Maybe your mother was like that, and you inherited, like father, like son, like daughter, like granddaughter. That doesn't matter. Jesus died on the cross. Amen. The purpose of preaching the gospel is to break those natures, is to tame the tongue, so that it can obey the Bible. Amen. Are we together, friends? Amen. Are we together? Amen. 
The purpose of preaching the gospel is to tame that tongue, to break it, to make it subject to the gospel. Even if you don't want, it's enforced upon you. Yeah. It's enforced upon you. It must be tamed. It must obey the Bible. Are we together? Because Proverbs 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. You have read that scripture before? Yes. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. As you are sitting there, you have got the power of life and death. You can glorify God. You can curse God with the same tongue. You can uplift your brother. You can throw them down by your tongue. You can choose to gossip or not. The power of life, the power of death is in your tongue. You can choose to testify or keep quiet. Are we together? Our tongues are to be used to bless God. That's the power of life. Our tongues are supposed to be birthed in prayer. Yes. That's the power of life. They ought to be soaked in praise. That's the power of the tongue. People must come here, must get lost in singing. Every hand must be up. Because the power of the tongue. Yeah, the tongue can be used to glorify God. It can be used for edification. Are we together, friends? Sure. The tongue. Okay. The power of life now. In the message, my new ministry, Brother Abraham says, and unconsciously, banks must have said the right thing. Are we together, friends, there? Banks Hoods, who was fishing with Brother Branham, he says, must have said the right thing. He says, paragraph 54, and when Banks said that, all of a sudden, something struck me. The power of life. He said the right thing, and the Holy Spirit spoke out and said, that say the Lord. Because of the tongue of a brother, he said the right thing. Something came down. We want that something in our lives. And that power is in your tongue to say the right things to bring the power of God down. Oh, yes. Paragraph 57 says, Then God does things so strange. All of a sudden, I felt the coming something down over the top of them hoods. Those things can happen in our lives as we are sitting here right now. Those things can happen if you say the right words to the preaching of the gospel. He says, and the Holy Spirit moved it down and said, stand up. Speak to this little fish and it shall have its life again. Amen. There was resurrection because a brother said the right thing. The power of the tongue. Huh? We always read about Sister Hate Right. Last week, a sister saying, Yeah, Sister Hate Right, she said the right words. You remember? Yeah. Hey, he says, uh, first, uh, paragraph 20, Hate Right the other day, she didn't ask for nothing. Nothing. In some spoken words, she, she was just quiet. She never said even a single word. When the brothers was busy eating, she was just sitting there. He says, she was just sitting there, but she said the right thing, which pleased the Holy Spirit. Friends, can we say the right things that will please the Holy Ghost? So that it comes down to deal with your situation. Eh? Which pleased the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit spoke back and said, Hetty, Ask anything that you will. Whatever you got, whatever, what a way to receive your things. When God himself comes down, says, ask what you want. Because this 
which have said, I'm happy. Remember, Brother Abraham says, the angel of the Lord loves this song. Only believe. All things are possible. Brother Abraham says, the angel of the Lord likes this song. Yeah. Whenever that song was sang, the angel will come down. And today, let me give you a challenge. If your tongue is tamed, you can say the right words. Amen. All heaven will shake and say, come down, Gabriel. Do something for this woman. Do something for this girl. He says, ask anything, anything. But Abraham said, the healing of your crippled sister. You need healing this morning. Amen. Church, are you with me? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. The power of life is in your tongue. Amen. Brother Abraham asked it right. Do you need healing for Edith? Eh? Says ten thousand dollars. Everyone needs ten thousand dollars here. I need it too. But we are busy begging and crying and fasting for one million. But here the secret is say the right thing. Use your tongue as a power of life to bring God down in your situation. In your home life. You need a healing. Intervention from God. Use your tongue. Because the power of life lays there. You can say the right thing to bring deliverance. In your life. Amen. The power of death and life is in your tongue. Amen. Are we together, friends? Yes. God can do something for you if you say the right things. That thief of the cross, what did he say? Jesus was there. Amen. One on the left, one on the right. One guy says, Hey, come on, hey, deliver us, man. What's your problem here? You are healing others. But this guy says, Hey, hey. Hey, don't you fear God? Don't you fear God? Don't you fear God? I'm a murderer. I'm a thief. I'm a burglar. I'm a rapist. And I'm here. I'm dying. But this man, this man has never done anything wrong. Remember me when you come for your kingdom. Jesus, I'm sure, was surprised. He says, what? Today, you'll be with me in paradise. No baptism. No repentance. No altar call. Nothing, just the tongue, just the right word. He's in paradise. Say the right words to bring about your redemption. The things that bother you, Jesus is waiting for the right words. Not grumbling, not murmuring, not slandering, but the right words to bring about your redemption. Joshua. He said the right words. Yeah? Just the power of his tongue. To say, sun, stand still. Moon, stand still. In the valley of Ajalon. And the Bible says, never had that thing happened. To stop the sun. But it was the power of the tongue. That Joshua used. Hezekiah, what did he do? He brought that letter. He put it on the altar. He says, Lord, aren't thou God? That created the universe. Who ruled everything. Look at this man. How he seeketh a quarrel. May you show him that thou art Jehovah. And God came down. Say Isaiah the son of Amos. Go and tell this man. That which has prayed to me. Against an Caleb. Have I heard. Stand ye still. And see my salvation. Do you want God to come down. In your situation. And say, stand still. This last of yours, you see it no more. This temper, you see it no more. This joblessness, you see it no more. Eh? Joshua said the same thing. He said the same thing. He said, Lord, you are God. You created heavens and earth. In your right hand, there's power. No man can fight against thee. No man can fight against thee. Now these Ammonites and the Moabites, they are attacking us. We have got no power. We only look up unto thee. He used his tongue. That's yet God, friends. God came down. God came down through tongues and interpretations. He said, stand ye still. This battle is not yours. 
this is mine. Yeah. Uh, this is mine. See the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians that you see, you see them no more. It's in the power of the tongue, friends. What you say before God, what you acknowledge God of doing, that determines what you get. Yeah. Are you bound by some spirit? Say the right words. Amen. God will come down. Amen. Are you needy this morning? Yeah. God will come down in your life. Amen. You need a breakthrough. Say the right words. Amen. Say the right things, brother. Are we together? Amen. Don't wait for a convention. Wait for Easter. There's a minister coming from America. That's why you want to pray. Yeah. Yeah, in, yeah, out, yeah, in, yeah, out. You're still lasting. You're still in your problems. Is there no deliverance? Is there not Jesus who died on the cross? Yeah, in, yeah, out, you're still gossiping. Prayers cannot be answered. Why? The tongue is not tamed. But Jesus died on the cross to tame the tongue. So that when you say the right things, God will come down. Say, so that which you've prayed. That which you've asked. I've come down to deal with it. Who didn't do like such a thing? Yeah? Who didn't do like such a thing, friends? Caesar said, for God to come down. So I've heard your request. I've come down personally to deal with them. Because of what you said towards my word. Yeah? How many say, Lord, tame my tongue? How many say, Lord, I want to surrender my tongue to you? I want to surrender my tongue to the dictates of the Bible. I don't want this slandering tongue. Talk about other things except the Bible. I repent of those things. I want my tongue to be under the Bible. I want to turn the tongue to speak the right things so that I can receive what I desire as the musicians come. The tongue must be tamed, friends. Amen. The power of death and life is in your tongue. Yes. What you do with your tongue determines what you get. Amen. Are you willing to surrender your tongue? Amen. To say, I surrender my tongue. As we sing, I surrender all. I surrender my tongue this morning so that God can use me I surrender my tongue this morning so that I can bring the presence of God into my situation. I've got needs. I've got financial needs. I've got spiritual needs. I've got emotional needs. I've got needs in my body that I need God to undertake. How is your tongue today? If you take stock of your tongue, how is it? How is it? Why has God not answered down? To say, I've heard your prayer. In the Bible, he answered. He has answered people who use their tongue in the positive sense. Hezekiah, Jehoshaphat, Moses, everyone, those in financial problems, he answered them. Because they use their tongue. What about you and me? Is my tongue tamed? As you stand up, is your tongue tamed? Friends, would you surrender your tongue this afternoon? He said, Lord, I surrender my tongue unto thee. I want to be brother, like Brother Banks. Today's examples that God is still the same. That if you say something positive, God can come down and deal with your situation. Because you've said something positive, your tongue is tempted. Let's sing that song as you surrender our tongues, friends. All oh, to Jesus I surrender. Yeah. 
How is your tongue? Is it surrendered to the Lord Jesus? Is it a gossiping tongue? Is it a tongue that breaks others? Yeah. Is your tongue surrendered to the Lord Jesus?
honor, we give you glory. Thou art gracious, O oh God. We thank you for your blood, Heavenly Father, that you washes us, O oh God. We thank you that you can have recourse and come back to you, O oh God, for a cleansing. Master, my head is up. I need my tongue tamed. I need my tongue cleansed, Lord Jesus, because it brings power of life and death. I can use my tongue to bring life or to bring death, but I don't want to use it to bring death, Heavenly Father. Let me prophesy life, Lord God Almighty, with my tongue. Let me use it to bring the glory of God down. Master, in my house, in my work situation, in my needs, God, let me use my tongue to bring the Shekinah glory down so that it can do things for me. Bless your name, Heavenly Father. Your children, oh God, under the altar. Your children, Lord God Almighty. Master, taking all the courage to come to the altar. I pray sincerely. I pray from my heart. May you bless them richly. May you bless them, Heavenly Father. May you undertake for them, oh God. May you undertake, may you cleanse and bless their hearts, their tongues, Lord God Almighty, forever and ever. As we pray, Lord God Almighty, in Jesus Christ's name this afternoon. Amen and amen. God, we should bless you. God, we should bless you as we sing. There's a precious hiding place in Jesus' side, in Jesus' side.
Let's just bow our heads and pray. Our gracious and most loving Heavenly Father, what shall we say then, Father, after such a message? Dear God, Jehovah Father, it's your voice speaking to the minister. Lord Jesus, Father, seeing the places where we lack, seeing the places, Father, Jehovah, where we fail thee, dear God. But Lord Jesus, Father, we are so thankful, dear God, for your children, Father, with the hearts, Father, Jehovah, that are so mellow. And Lord Jesus, Father, when they hear the voice of God calling them, Father Jehovah, they are not ashamed, Father Jehovah, to stand and say, Yeah, I am, Father, to cleanse, Father Jehovah, even Lord God Almighty, every sin, to cleanse every iniquity, dear God. And Lord Jesus, Father, that's what David speaks about, Lord. And he says, Give me a heart, even Father Jehovah, that listens to your word, even Father Jehovah, that is able to be malleable, dear Father. Oh God, Jehovah, Father, even Lord, until David became a man after your own heart, even Father, because when you spoke, dear God, and Father Jehovah, Lord, we remember that place. Even Father, when the prophet Nathan Father came with the word, and Lord God Almighty, Father Jehovah, his heart was broken, and Lord God Almighty, he repented up before your face, oh God. Even Father, that's what Lord God Almighty, Father, you desire, and that's what Father makes you even to love us more and more, dear God. Jehovah, Father, we are so thankful tonight, this this afternoon, dear God, as we stand in your presence, Father, Lord Almighty God, Jehovah, Father, we can feel our hearts. Even Father Jehovah, have been cleansed, dear Jesus. Even Father, as your spirit was moving. Even Father, amongst Father Jehovah, your children, Lord Almighty God, Jehovah Father, to break the shackles, oh God. Even Father Jehovah, to set them free, even to give them, dear Father, even Lord God Almighty, Father, something that Lord God Almighty, they can be able to come closer to you. Even Father Jehovah, because we know these things, even other things that take us away from you. And Lord God Almighty, we can feel that Holy Spirit upon us. We can feel that anointing, oh God. Even Father, but after your word has brought Father Jehovah, even a separation, Father, between those things and you dear God even Father Jehovah we can be able to come drawing closer to you Father oh God that is our desire this afternoon I want to be closer drawn to you Father even Lord God Almighty Father we thank you dear God even for your saving power we thank you for your delivering grace even Father this afternoon dear God I believe your children are set free Father Jehovah they are free indeed until Father Jehovah the songwriter wrote he says he that the son is set free is free indeed no more pain Father Jehovah of Slavery. Oh God, Jehovah Father, we are thankful tonight, this afternoon, dear God. May your Holy Spirit bless each and every soul, dear God, Jehovah, even that has repented, Lord. And we pray, Father, that Lord may you give them grace, even Father, to walk, even Father Jehovah, in the newness, oh God, of your spirit, Father Jehovah, even Lord God Almighty, as your word has given us the admonition, Father, on how we ought to speak, Father. May your Holy Spirit, Father, continue, even Lord God Almighty, Father, to give us the strength, even to breathe on our tongues, oh God. Even Father, may we speak grace and Father Jehovah that will edify. Father Jehovah, may we speak things, Lord God Almighty, that will encourage people, dear God. And Lord God Almighty, Father, we are so thankful for the minister. Lord Almighty God, it's not easy, Father. Even Lord God Almighty, Father, to bring such a message. But Lord, even obeying the voice of God. Even Father Jehovah, He gave Himself away, Father. And Lord God Almighty, Father, you have done the work. Oh God, may you give Him strength, Lord. Even Father Jehovah, for the many days ahead. Lord Almighty God, as He stands in your your service Lord we pray that Lord may you enjoy him with power dear father may you enjoy him with the anointing of the Holy Spirit even father Jehovah to give him strength even father Jehovah to do the work that you have called him to do dear father Lord Almighty God because we know each and every one of us we have a part to play even father Jehovah in this whole work of God and father Jehovah we pray for him Lord Almighty God even father for the service that is laying ahead for him in the afternoon Lord Almighty God may you continue to give him grace and strength and Lord God Almighty bless even each and every one of us Lord, to this afternoon as we are going back to our different homes, may we think about these things, dear Father. May your grace, Father, take us, even Lord God Almighty, even through the week as we pray, Father, that Lord, may your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us through. Father, we pray. We also pray for our pastor, dear God, even Father, with the work that is ahead of him, Lord, even going to Malawi, dear Father, Lord Almighty God, we want to pray that Lord, may you inspire him in a special way, continue to lead him and guide him, dear Father, that he may be a blessing, Father, to the bride. We pray this afternoon, Father, we Thank you. We appreciate you this afternoon. And Lord God Almighty, Father, all we can say is all praise and honor and glory be given to your wonderful, precious name. We love you, Father. We appreciate you. In the precious name of the, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Take our seats. As the deacons come to dismiss us.
Sorry, people, I made an error this morning. There will be services this week. Brother Hannes goes away on Friday and comes back the following Thursday. So the following week, there will be no services. But this week, there will be services. Sorry, my mistake. Amen. God bless you. As Deacon comes to dismiss us, let's just... God is moving.